Over the last few years, I've made quite a few videos that feature cassettes. I've taken a look at the Philips Compact Cassette, the Mini, the Micro, the Pico, and the NT. We've also had a look at an interesting cassette changer mechanism that came from Sony, and recently I made a video where I tried out Dolby S noise reduction for the first time. Well, today we're going to take a look at auto reverse, but don't switch off yet because this is the most complicated auto reverse mechanism in the world ever. Possibly. Now, auto reverse is the simple idea that when you get to the end of side A of a tape, you want to play side B without having to get up and turn it over. And manufacturers struggled with this over the years. In the end, they came up with a very simple solution, and that was to take the tape head off the tape, spin it around, and play the motors in the reverse direction, and that's your auto reverse. At least that was the end result. Before they got to that, there were an awful lot of weird ideas. This is one of Philips' early attempts at an auto-reverse mechanism, and the idea with this one is, once it's finished playing the tape, it fires it up a plastic ramp, it hopefully slides back down that ramp, and with the wind in the right direction and your fingers crossed, it'll locate back in the machine and play the other side. Now, I haven't got one of those to show you, but I've got something that I consider even more impressive. It's Akai's version of auto-reverse called the Invertomatic. But to make sure I've got one that works properly, I've had to switch on the old time machine again and go and get myself a brand new one, all the way back from 1972. So the model number, as you can see, is the CS55D, and after a bit of online research, I managed to find mention of it in this May 1972 edition of Billboard as being part of the new product line for 1973. Before we get to the auto reverse, let's just have a quick look at what we get inside the box because it's quite fun unboxing something that's 44 years old. So here's the instruction booklet. Uh, let's just have a flick through here. There's some contemporary devices of the era and also you can see a reel to reel machine there as well. In addition, there's also a list of the Akai Field Service Stations. Most countries are covered in there, including at the top, you notice Ceylon, which of course became Sri Lanka, or was renamed to it in 1972. So that definitely dates the contents of the box. In addition to that, I've got a guarantee that's valid for six months from the date of purchase that I have to send off to Tokyo myself. And I've also got this piece of orange paper that tells me low noise tape is standard for this machine. Okay, uh, good. As far as the machine itself goes, well, that's real wood around the outside, none of this veneer business. It's a big old thing as well, and of course, on the front, the controls are those piano keys. The only interesting thing about it, looking at it from the outside, really, is that it's got a weird cassette loading mechanism. So let's just have a quick listen. The sound on it is okay, there's no Dolby noise reduction, it doesn't do chrome tapes or metal or any of that business, there's not an awful lot about this, it's a very basic simple machine with not a lot of features. The only weird thing, as I mentioned, the eject mechanism and the fact it's got this auto reverse which is what we're really here to show you. Now this particular model, the CS55D, wasn't the top of the range at the time, there were other models further up that had Dolby etc on them, however we're not really interested in that. We're here to look at the Invertomatic. And just like any auto reverse mechanism, once it reaches the end of one side of the tape, it'll then play the other side. You've also got a manual button here, and if you press that, it'll just play the other side straight away without having to wait to get to the end of it. Now, let me show you its party trick first of all. So this is side A going in here. I'll press the reverse mechanism. Now it starts playing side B automatically, so I've got to press stop and then eject, and there you go, that's side B. Okay, not particularly impressive so far. All the magic, though, is hidden behind this cover. So to be able to show it to you properly, I've got to take the whole thing apart. So let's have a look what it looks like on the inside. Right, hold on to your hats. You're about to witness the most impressively over-engineered auto-reverse system in the world ever. Now, if you've seen some of my other videos, you might be aware that I'm always impressed by a good mechanism. In fact, the very first video I uploaded to YouTube was that of an automatic toaster. I've gone on before how I like fruit machines, an automata. Well, this thing, I think, takes the biscuit. This is the most impressive use of electromechanical engineering that I've ever seen. You've got to remember there's not a single silicon chip in this thing. Everything is done with switches, relays, springs, cogs and wheels. It's absolutely amazing. 
And for everything that's happening on the top, there's probably an equal or even greater number of things happening underneath. In fact, you don't really know where to look. There's so many belts, pulleys and wheels under here. It's absolutely amazing that somebody could put this thing together. I mean, I don't even think anyone would know where to start nowadays if you ask them to make something like this. So as you've seen, this mechanism moves pretty quickly. And if you don't slow down and take a look around every now and then, you might miss something. So let's just have a moment. Moving away from the Invertomatic for a moment, it's a good opportunity to have a look at the internals of a traditional cassette player and go through the different things that are in here. So first off, on the right hand side, you'll see this motor spinning around. That keeps going all the time, the thing's powered on. It's not just moving when you've got play engaged. Below that, you've got the tape counter, and that's got a wheel underneath it that's spinning around, and that's spinning this spiral, which as you can see, in turn turns those reels around very slowly. Now I've got the macro lens out here so I can have a good look at it. You see next to number seven that's coming around now on the left, there's two little pegs sticking out from that. And when those get to the back, they'll hit the inner wheel there and that pulls that on, moves it on one number. And of course on the inner wheel as well, there's a thing next to the number seven on that which moves the next one along. Not often you get a chance to see one of those so up close. Now if we just disengage the heads from the machine we'll better see those in a little bit more detail as well. First off on the left we've got the erase head which as you can see is pretty much just an electromagnet. You can see the wires wrapped around there. Next you can see the playhead push the tape against that little sponge on the spring inside the cassette and of course that is the playhead and the record head as you can see on the back there from the wires they're both next to each other. And then finally we've got the pinch roller which pushes the tape against that silver capstan you can see sticking up and that's what pulls it through. Now if you decide to press the record button, a mechanical arm moves up the side of the cassette and then pushes a little metal finger into the top right protect hole to see whether or not you've pulled those tabs out. And also on the front here you'll notice we've got this light and you might be thinking that that's purely there to light up the play button when you press that down, which it does as you can see here. That's not all it does though, the light also travels downwards and underneath that little bulb there's a rotating wheel and as you can see that wheel has two holes in it and those holes are letting the light through and they're flashing therefore on that little photo sensor at the bottom there and when that photo sensor sees that the flashing has stopped it knows you've reached the end of that side of the tape and in this case I've got it set to auto reverse so the tape's spinning around now and there you go it's playing again. And with that, let's conclude our look at the insides of this machine, but we can't go without one last look at that fascinating Invertomatic mechanism. It's amazing how much work went in just to getting a tape to go from that side to that side. And of course, in the end, as we saw earlier, they ended up coming up with this much simpler idea of swapping the heads around. However, this had the disadvantage that it could lead to misaligned heads. In fact, that was such a concern to the high-end cassette deck manufacturer Nakamichi that in the 80s, when they brought out Auto Reverse, they didn't flip the heads around. Instead, they decided to flip the tape around. It came out into that little window that you see on the front of the machine there, spun around on a carousel and then went back in again. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? It seems like Akai's hunch might not have been that crazy after all. Anyway, that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.